All right, we're gonna be talking about artificers and feats. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about the 5e D&D Artificer Battlesmith. Uh, it's gotten a lot of love in our in, in our games, in our play. Like, you've played one. My brother Ryan's played one. You've played one. I've played <laughs> one. So I, I've both been on both sides of the table for for this particular artificer subclass twice now. And in the uh, kids game that I'm running, I've only run like you know one two sessions now. Yeah. Uh, one of the kids is playing the the artificer battlesmith as well. So it's like I'm not seeing. Like anything else, I've I've seen like one alchemist that's out there. Yeah. But out of six playthroughs of Artificer, it's Battlesmith, 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 Battlesmith. It's crazy. I'm Nerdarchist Ted, and I'm Nerdarchist Dave. Welcome, Welcome to, to Nerdarchy Nerd for nerds by nerds. nerds. It's all about the pet, right? Let's face it. It's about having the companions, it's about having the pet. I'm kind of mildly intrigued by the alchemist and the armor. Mm -hmm. The armorer is you're you're, you're moving far from fantasy to more like sci-fi with mm -hmm. that, which is fine. I mean, you know, there's enough room for all kinds of things in the game. Well, part of me wants to check out the artillerist and see, uh, you know, what that's like, because uh, you know, to me, it's like you know, you just want to check out the one that gets no love. <laughs> <laughs> or do you want to be like Hemdinger from League of Legends? Or just drop your turrets and run away. <laughs> I, I think I like the idea of the boom. I think yeah. that could be a, a cool aspect. And since I've played, you know, the artificer that you know has the critter, you know, what what is the what does the cannon look like? All right, so let's let's take a look at the uh, that this particular artificer subclass for five E Dungeons and Dragons. And determine like what sets it apart from the rest. All right. So the first thing you have to consider as as a battlesmith, you are you are more inclined to be a melee kind of artificer. You're not standing standing in the background. You've got your uh, your creature that has the ability to operate and thus be used as your bonus action. So you you definitely aren't going to want to choose any feats that are going to eat up that bonus action because yeah. you're probably using it for your Iron Defender or Steel Defender. Yeah, I will say it is it is one of the tankier subclasses for Artificer. I mean, Armor is even tankier than, mm -hmm. than the Battlesmith, but the Battlesmith has some other things going with it. Uh, one, it is a very much a weapon-based subclass right now. I will, I'm not going to go and say it necessarily has to be uh, melee-based because you could, you could certainly do a ranged one. Mm -hmm. My own battle, uh, my own battlesmith switches back and forth between using a, uh, a um, uh, what does he use? A black powder um, long rifle mm -hmm. uh, that he found in Curse of Strahd. Didn't even do it. Like, I didn't seek it out. I wasn't right. planning on it, but I was like, oh, this is cool. I'll just use one of my infusions on this to make it a magic weapon. Because that's the other thing. If you fight with a magic weapon when you're a battlesmith, you can then use your intelligence mod instead of your strength or dexterity when right. it comes to making your attacks and your extra damage. You know, when I played, I, you know, almost exclusively was using, you know, the the, the weapon and going into melee combat yeah. and fighting a alongside you know. I did that too <laughs> but because because you know it was later that I adopted the range aspect mm -hmm. only because I had like I was like okay how can I not <laughs> how can I not make this a magic weapon and use it like usually he fights with a war hammer and a shield and uh his beast you know his uh iron defender is a kangaroo and he rides in the pouch because he's small right and I've mounted combat nice so like you know and one of the one of the moves I've only gotten to use it once is to uh, when they attack the attack the mount with mount of combat, you can make them attack you instead, and then you and then your iron defender can impose disadvantage on that attack. Right. <laughs> it was a lot of resources to really pull <laughs> off that thing, but it made me happy when it finally worked. So let's get into the feats uh, now that we we've talked a little bit about you know the battlesmith and what's important to them. All right. So first off, is this is going to be my my top choice, given the fact that as an artificer, is a half caster. You've got you know very limited resources when it comes to spells. So the first option is actually two different things. Uh, that's going to be Fey Touched or Shadow Touched. Both of them are half feats that you can you know use to bump up your intelligence, wisdom, or charisma, and then you get. A couple of spells that you get one free casting of, but you also learn them, and you you can use your spells your spell slots you already have to be able to add them. Mm -hmm. So I think they are top choices, and you can make some really good selection with them. You know whether you get like you know the ability to inflict wounds, uh, you know as a 
you know, a touch, or whether you're getting Misty Step to kind of get out of dodge. Yeah, and both of them each have like here's a specific spell you get, and then here's some here's here's two schools of magic that you choose from. So it is going to it is going to up your caster capabilities. Indeed. Uh, next up is Fighting Initiate. Uh, as we mentioned, this is one of the more martial classes when it comes to uh, the Artificer. So being able to take Fighting Initiate allows you to take a fighting style that matches your your preferred mode of combat. So whether you're, you know, you just want to increase that, that armor class and, you know, you know, take defensive, whether you want to focus on the dealing of damage with your weapon and you take dueling, or whether you are, you know, looking to go more of a ranged combatant and you take archery, all of them are all solid choices for any of the different styles of artifacts you might be taking. Or you fight with a shield, take protection, stand next to your your iron your iron defender, and no matter whether they attack you or the iron defender, the one of you can give up your reaction to get imposed disadvantage. All right, so our next one up is gonna be Gift of the Metallic Dragon. Uh, and this one offers two things. First and foremost, it's gonna offer resistance that's mutable, it's changeable. So you can kind of, you know, you use that to be like, oh, well, what kind of situation am I going into? Let me change this up so that I'm better prepared for it. And even though it uses your bonus action, you can, you can imbue your weapon with an energy type for the next minute and be able to be like, oh, now I'm gonna do some extra damage when I'm hitting with that weapon. So that's gonna give you some more de defensive capabilities, some more offensive capabilities, some more options. Next up, we have tough. Well, one of the problems with being a being tanky but not having a lot of hit points is when you do get it, it's gonna hurt more. So adding tough into the mix is going to give you another two hit points per level. That really adds up after a while. Uh, speaking of getting hit and, uh, you know, whatnot, Warcaster is going to be our number five. Uh, and this is this is one that while you might be limited on your spell slots, that means if you're concentrating on a spell, you don't want to lose it. So being able to get advantage on those concentration checks is going to be vital to you. Uh, but on those off chances that you're going to get that attack of opportunity, you can be able to use one of your attack spells, you know, against them and, you know, that, that part might not be key to you, but the advantage on your con saves should be. Yeah, let's face it. It's probably going to be, it's probably going to be a cantrip unless you used touched by the uh, Fey touched or shadow touched <laughs> to, to get an offensive spell. But that's okay. There, the other benefit actually is also really useful as well. When it's hard to cast spells as a battlesmith because a lot of times you're, you're using a shield and, and a weapon. That, that's kind of what makes them tanky. When your hands are full like that, if they're somatic components, you need a free hand. Right. And Warcaster allows you to do those components whether you're holding a shield or weapon. Yeah, so that, that you know, is the, is the final stitch for that. Totally a great feat. I've seen a lot of players, you know, use that to some, you know, really awesome results. For sure. So if you like this video, others like it, as well as all the awesome content over on nerdarchy.com, why not come check us out on Patreon? Throw us some love and some support over there. Articles like, the Lord of Blades is the ultimate artificer. But if you wanna you know, check out one of our products instead and, and check it out over on nerdarchy.com, why not check out Taking Chances? It's a collection of games of skill and chance for fifth edition. Inside you'll find new and different games for both characters and players to engage with using their in-game skills and proficiencies for some and relying on luck of the dice for others. Along with the games are establishments where characters can discover and play them. The largest of these, Union Salon, introduces several new toolkits and even more games giving characters a chance to use their tools in an arena-style battles as well as investigate a mystery. Eight new games of skills and chance, four establishments, over a dozen unique items, five new tool sets, an adventure focused on using tools as well as a new playable race, the Dwelf. Let us know what you think about our picks for feats for the Artificer Battlesmith down in the comments. Share your thoughts and ideas with the rest of the Nerdarchy community. While you're down there, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, click on that notification bell, you know you want to. Quick reminder, we drop new videos here on the channel Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, so come on back. But you can't wait till then, no worries, we got you covered with this card up here. D&D Artificer, five best infusions. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.